All right, so I need to transfer these marks. This is the leaf spring hanger front. This is the bump stop. This is the shock mount. And I need to get that exactly transferred from front to back. So what I do, I took a piece of three quarter inch conduit. I smash the end of it and I put a bolt in it. And this bolt, what I do is I put it in the existing holes and then I measure down this way, 52 inches, and I put a hole because 52 inches is where the next one goes. And then I drill the hole tight so the pencil fits in here snug. Always be sure to use a sparkly purple one too. <laughs> and then I just tape it just so I know it's not moving around. Just like so. Okay. And then I'm able to take this conduit, put it in my hole down there, my existing, and I take painter's tape, and all I have to do is make this line. Go to the next one, make that line. Next one, that line. And then just continue that all the way down for every hole I need to drill. So the next step is I need to know where these are on the frame so I just take a tape measure lay it over top of it and then I just mark the edges like spring hanger all the way across here on everything I have on the edges of the uh, the holes and then I just make little notations and then come down here and hook it back on line it up pull it tight and mark it spring hanger it's the first one shock this is spring hanger bolt number two and then there's spring hanger bolt number three and then we just continue on all the way down This is the bump stop right here. It's important you get these lined up good. This is the shock right there. And the shock's right there. Oops. The shock. shock so then we know where we have to drill there's no question so now we're going to center punch all these all right so the more accurate you are with your center punch holes the better your stuff is going to fit now we're drilling holes um, the uh, the diameter of the bolt so I don't have any room for error here so I got to be very careful if you see I get off a little bit I'll manipulate the hole go this way a little get it where I want it and then then I'll hit it really good. So we get a good positive depression because uh, we don't want the bit to wander either. That one's right on. These ones are really close to the edge, but we're working with what we got here. So I'll go ahead and Get these center punched and we'll start drilling. Alright, 
since this is an annular cutter so most times it'll pop the slug out well it just fell out but sometimes you get some crud up inside here and uh And it doesn't want to pop it out, so it's good to keep this clean inside there. Not easy to do, but I'll get some brake parts clean. All right, that's all cleaned out. Um, you don't want to get any metal shavings up in this chuck either, because if you do, it locks up. Now, we're going through two frames, so we have to drill through one, and then that's the first layer. I'm going to pop that out and then go to the second one. You can, you can tell when you hit through the first layer, it doesn't want to really cut through real well. He said that's the only place it's safe to drill into the flange because it's close to the supports. Because of the bag, you got the supports that right on easy. Yeah, the airbag that. supports are right there. You know, because the airbag's pushing right there. Mm -hmm. Plus, they're only three eighths holes. Now we'll move down to the next one. This is the bump stop that, that we're drilling the two holes in right now. Which I can't get a great shot of because I'm inside the frame. I think that's it on this side, so um, now we're going to get the other side. we got to clamp it to the frame. I have to clamp it to the bottom of the frame and the side to, because it comes in this way like this. So I've got to clamp it and, and drill it. I decided to do it this way because if I'm off at all, on these holes, and I pre-drilled the holes in these, then I'd have to re-drill them. That's what, we did the same thing on the front ones. We drilled these at the same time we drilled all that. So now we're ready to do this. Well, we finished all the drilling of the holes for the uh, other drive axle, including underneath, we got all the airbag mounts drilled from underside, and now we need to start working on the rear. We need, to, we need cross members in here, and we have to do uh, bring the rear axles in. Can't do it with that stand back there. So happy to have these. We just run this one up underneath here. We just run it up till it's snug. Now all we gotta do is just run this one down, take it out of our way. Okay, so we got the rear end brought up. He has to cut a couple U-bolts off, but he has it suspended by the wheels and the yoke, so it can't roll. Uh, once you touch it or anything. So. Man, the kids just keep on coming with this crap. Uh, we took this apart so we could change out these saddles that were broken. And uh, I went to go lift this off, and the center bolt, the center pins busted off. And uh, I lifted that off because I saw something I didn't like. Um, you know, the, uh, the axles cracked. The weld right here is cracked all the way around here. That's why it's damp. All the oil's coming out, and uh, <laughs> it gets better. The uh, the rear is cracked as well, but uh, they had silicone over top of it. I peeled the silicone off and. As you can see, she's. She's cracked there too, and that one's the same way. It's it's not as bad, but it's cracked. Um, <laughs> the other axle's cracked on that side. This side isn't. So you know we were ready to put axles underneath it, and now we got three four days of screwing around, taking this all apart, getting it cleaned up, trying to weld it, and finding out what else is broke. Um, man, this just gets old. You know he needs this truck and. I need it out of my life. Tomorrow we're gonna to start 
tearing it all apart. We're gonna peel. And I can't get in there well to clean that. Uh, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and take the S cam off and the and the slack adjuster and the brake chamber. Um, he's gonna be putting new wheel, new tires on it anyways. They gotta come off. I might as well just get that crap out of the way. Get the S cam tube out of there. Give myself some more room to work. It just sucks. It just sucks. I don't know if that'll show up well because the sun's shining real nice, but uh, this one's starting to crack right here. See it? It's just starting to crack right in the bottom here. You see, it's just starting to get damp. Oh well, never ends. I'd like to just find a couple axles to throw underneath it with Peterbilt low leaf since I'm already drilled and just move on. Here's the rear drive, and as you can see, this one's wet too. And I'll bet, I'll bet she's cracked right in there at the same place and this is saddles broke on this side so we got to replace it and I don't see any cracks on this side yet oh yeah there is look at that there it is yep it's cracked too so oh look at that crusty mess in there Ugh. yikes so it looks like oh yeah we gotta take care of this neglect here this is the old truck blues, we call it. So I sent a message to Peter Zilla of HTP Welders and USAWelders.com, and uh, I asked him what he thought the best procedure would be to repair this, you know, what welding procedure. And I thought maybe he might just send me a text real, real basic, say, hey, I would do this procedure. But no, that's not Peter's style, man. He, welding to peter is what trucks are to me he's very passionate about welding he holds i don't know how many different state certifications in welding and um you know he loves to to talk about it and and educate he's very good at educating and sharing his knowledge so uh he, within minutes he called me up and he we talked about you know why did this fail why did this weld crack fail because without without knowing why it failed how would you know how to go about repairing it so it doesn't happen again then we talked about how he would clean it up to get the oil out of the metal and then what procedure he would use and whether that procedure needed one single pass or multiple passes and after all of that it was like these are the options that i would use and it's not like you say, yeah, you, know, you have to do this, but you know, these are your options of what I think is suitable for this repair. And you know, when somebody takes the time out of their day to give you a call to help you out with this, man, that means something. Cause we just don't get that today in our, in our society. You know, companies just don't, very rarely do companies do this, you know, and I'm so grateful for the relationship with Peter Zilla and HTP welders of USA.com because you know, I have learned so much from them and not only are they great people but they make great equipment and that's what we're going to use to weld this so we Peter suggested and you know it makes total sense to me we're going to use the dual shield procedure over top of this one because it gives us a more uh, not as as uh, rigid of a weld it's slightly I hate to use the word flexible but uh, it's a little more forgiving weld and not only that we'll have dual shield so we're going to try and clean that up and burn out all the oil that's in the metal but uh, if there is some impurities, it's a little more forgiving about what's in there being it has, you know, a flux core in the wire. So the next step for me is I want to get everything apart. We're going to cut the rest of these apart, get the suspensions off, inspect everything. <clears throat> and then I have to decide if I'm going to take this S cam off to get to this one. Um, I really need to get in here this way and grind, which is going to be, I mean, it's doable, but it'd be much easier if I remove the S cam and the brake chamber and got it out of the way. Um, I don't know if I need to do that on all of them, but at least this one cracked like that, I think I should. I could be opening a can of worms because, you know, this is an old axle, so I could be going to take this off, take the bearings off, get the hub and the drum off, find the bearings are worn or seals or what have you, or brakes, you know, the hardware, the S-cam could be worn, the s corn cam, tube could be worn the bushings could be bad the slack adjuster could be bad i mean this could snowball out of control all i can do is put you know cross my fingers hope it isn't but 
<clears throat> you can't just bury your head in the sand. You know, if you're going to make a safe truck, you got to make a safe truck. The best, to the absolute best of my abilities for sure. So let's get it apart. One thing I've learned, I've learned over the years that, uh, you know, to get these little cones in here to pop out because they're kind of a swedge fit and that's what centers that axle in the hub. Uh, to protect the studs and keep the nuts from these little wedges from flying off, never be found again, leave the nuts on the, the studs a little bit and then smack this with a nice sledge to pop them loose. That way, you know, I don't lose anything. Well, consider the can of worms open. That's water. Fantastic. All right, broke this loose. So this is a lock nut. This goes over top of the lock plate. Right. So this, look in here. This is a lock plate. There's a keyway right here. And then there's a pin on the inside nut so you can adjust it and then this goes over it and then attaches it here so that this is uh it locks that inner nut which this inner nut is what sets your bearing preload how much uh, how tight those inner and outer bearings are together and how much play they have and there's a there's a procedure on every every manufacturer's website um, or every manufacturer has a procedure for setting the bearing preload. Alright, so now next thing I gotta do before I can get this off is I gotta back the brakes off. Because the spring brakes, this one has, see when you have a brake chamber like this, this side is a spring brake. So with the absence of air pressure, it the spring can ex is expanded and it applies the brake, so it pushes the brake shoe. So when you apply air to the brake chamber, it compresses that spring and releases those brakes so the wheel can travel freely. So we have to either cage the bolt, put a caging bolt in here and compress that manually or put air to it, or we can back off the brakes through the uh, slack adjuster. See it's a T-slot, this is a caging bolt. It goes in and find the slot it goes in. A lot of times these will be the caps will be left off and then that place where this goes gets full of crap and then you can't get the caging bolt in. There we go. Okay, so then it turns a quarter of a turn and locks in full forward. I put grease on these because we reuse these caging bolts and they're an acme thread so they don't they don't hold up real well in this situation because I use an impact probably shouldn't all right now you can watch the brakes on the inside release go around the back and watch these shoes as they start to release as soon as we can turn that wheel we stop you can see the slack adjuster pulling in right here Once, the, once that moves, we're good enough. We don't need to go any farther because you'll just destroy it. So now we'll do this one. The sun's not quite as bright over here, so it <clears throat> might be better. Let's be gentle. Take the bearings out and get the drums off. I got the drum and the shoes off. 
And um, now we're looking at the S cam and the bushings. I don't know, you're this far, put bushings in it. You know? Truck's been sitting a while. So now I got the snap ring off the back. We can push the push the S cam out. Once the S cam's out, we can unbolt this, and now we're down into here, down to where we need to do the repair. All right, so we're looking at the S cam. You can see the pitting here. Apparently, maybe had water laying in it, but the bigger thing is you can see how there's a there's a groove here where it's worn down. The shaft is literally worn. Uh, so the wear here, you know, also wear in these spots here. And we've got a flat spot right there on that one. So to me, it's S cams and S cam bushings. So sometimes this is a common problem. It's not necessarily a bad seal. I mean, it could be in this case, but a lot of times guys put them in backwards. The seal is meant to hold the grease in this way, and uh, they'll drive them in the wrong way. See that? Mm-hmm. Same thing, man. Needs all the airlines, they're all junk. Where do you stop? <laughs> Here's that wear plate. It was missing off the other side. It's almost worn too on this side. Um, so this is sacrificial, right? It'll, the S cam's gonna wear into this before it wears into the spider. So next step is we gotta get this apart. I've uh, taken the snap ring off of this side of the slack adjuster and the washer. And next we need to get the slack adjuster through. We gotta get the S cam through the slack adjuster and pull it out this way. Now you know where Wendy's Frosties come from. Huh. So here's the drain plug. This is where the threads end, right here. So all of this is crud. It kind of looks like rust, like the housing's no good. And it's rusting from the inside out. So I'm looking at the bearings and there's, come on, focus. A little bit, you can see a little bit of pitting on there. Um, but that's kind of a judgment call. If it was mine, I'd just replace them because I'm here already. But the bigger thing is those look like they've been replaced at some point, but look at the, look at the race. You can see how pitted up the race is in here. And you see the, the change in the color of the shine from here up. So more than likely somebody didn't want to go through all the work of, oh, you can feel that too. Somebody didn't want to go through the work of changing that, that race. So they just changed the bearings. That's weird. I've never seen one where you could feel that before. But when you start seeing that discoloration, you see the pits in there. I mean, that's... Uh, that's material transfer. Yeah, we're not, we're not putting it back together like that. Uh, looks like we need some races. Yeah, this is the same thing. Only it's actually worse. There's more pitting on this one, and you can see where the bearings were laying. You know, it's funny, he complains about the fact that when I take one of his trucks apart, it costs so much money. And, you know, if you bought better trucks that didn't have people cobbling stuff together, it wouldn't be so expensive. Man, this one's like, it's wearing right here, but not right here. Like, that's not in there, right? Hmm. Let's sit. Oopsie. Let's sit flat. Uh, it might be high right there. Uh, I can't, yeah, I don't know. I can't say. I was afraid of this once we opened it up, you know. And this front bracket was really loose, so I took it apart and found that the last person that was in here 
you know, uh, put never seize on the bolt, but uh, failed to put all the pieces in. It's supposed to be a rubber bushing on either side of that, that ring right there, you know, much like this, but apparently it was too much bother to put all the pieces in. Tell you, I don't feel so bad about my welds now. <laughs> Look at that, that's so undercut there. There's like it's severely weakened. Oh, Lord, yeah, and this is the bottom of it. Yeah, that's what the weight sits on. Let's get this. Oh, yeah, it's a little better. Great, just great. Look at this. It's cracked right there. It's cracked right there, cracked there. They gouge the crap out of this. Look at this big hole. Oh man. I wish I could just find a set of axles. I just can't find any. All the ones I looked at are cracked the same way these ones were. Oh well, I'm gonna grind all this down. Start to getting it cleaned up. Let's see if we can get down to something decent. I'm gonna have to fill this with weld all the way across there. There's gonna be bead after bead after bead after bead. It's the only way I'm gonna be able to get this. Alright, so the first one's in, and what we're doing is just getting the saddle weld tied together from the saddle to here. So I got it turned up pretty, pretty high. Now I'm going to clean this up, I'm going to do this crap right here. I'm going to do everything on the flat first, and then I'm going to turn because... Peter was telling me that when you're what's called out of position, like this is in position, flat. So anything other than doing flat, it changes how the weld reacts. So we're going to turn the axle so this is flat up here then, and we'll take care of that. I'm not going to do it before because I'm going to have a hard time. I, I don't, I'm not going to be able to clean all this out real good. Look at the smoke out the end of the tube. Yeah, I saw that. It's funny. So Can't all we're really doing is the filling these divots right now where they've, you know, damaged the... The, uh, the tube and then we're going to grind this flat and then once I have a good surface here then we're going to replace this we'll V this down a little bit and replace this seam weld right here okay so I flapped this you can see a little bit of a dip right here this is where the U-bolt rides and I didn't want to take any more material out and I don't want to go any farther so I'm just going to leave that, but I got this flap this. Now we've got this smoothed out and a V in here. Now we're going to connect these two welds and put that seam back. It's hot. Yeah, I know it does. You can tell where my hand was getting hot. I was starting to get a little jumpy. <laughs> I hate to do this because it's going to be a lot of grinding, but I think it might be better because um, I don't want to have to do a bunch of little ones in here. I'll probably come down here, turn a corner, and come back up, and then we'll fill in after. All right, so here's the first one. Down and back up. 
and uh, since I went down and back up on this one I should probably go this way with this one so I don't put too much heat in it I don't think it would twist this but that sure would suck if it did wouldn't it yeah look at the bubbling oil yeah that must mean there's a crack right there probably or maybe just a it could be just hot big blob of it right there yeah. we need to get a new cart or build a cart for this because for now we just had it sitting on top of his miller but um the htp is becoming our welder of choice and all the cords between the two welders get tangled messed up it's very irritating so we're gonna have to work on getting some kind of cart uh, for just this top one so it, it, it worked out a lot better i think because he'll ask me to get the welder out and i'm trying to figure out which cord goes to which and you know it's very confusing That part might be easier fixed than I thought. Maybe. You enjoy that a little too much, don't you? I probably do. <laughs> I think you do. But I think Peter does too. Oh. There's something about it. You need one of them little hammer things no. like he has. No? Why? because I prefer just taking it off the edge. Oh, okay. Okay. Anyways, now we'll clean this up and we'll fill the middle in. Oh, yeah. All right. Now what I need to do is grind this flat down to this. Get this all cleaned up. Let's see if I need to touch up anywhere, which I believe I probably will. I don't know if you can tell or not, but there's a great big weld right here, and it's obviously leaking in several places. So we're gonna grind all this out and start over. And see what we can find. I can see a weld here too. And it's a mess. Good lord. That is a mess. And look, it's soaked in oil. I may have the same problems. I don't know. Alright, so we got all this ground down flat. And I, gr I, I ground a bead into here. A uh, groove for a bead. And I need to grind back into here to finish this one because it needed to go uphill just a little bit. But then I have another one coming here, so I guess I'll just grab it with that. So I'll just come in here. But this all has to be filled with rows of beads because there's so many cracks in here. We've we've gone in and welded and grinded it back down to get it built up. And I know this is awful. We need an axle, but we don't have any axle, so gotta make do. So this is one of the only manufacturers that do this and I can't help but think that this weld like this is why it's cracking because we don't have this problem on any other suspension we work on. This is the only one that's like this, you know, and I don't have a choice. Like, you know, I, I've got to seal this back up and it's cracked. So I got to put a weld back there. I mean, there's not a lot I can do about it, but you know. It is what it is. Just hope we can find some some axles. I mean, the bigger problem is there's axles out there to be had, but if you buy a cutoff with a couple axles, you know it's far more money than he wants to spend. And uh, you know this took what three days of screwing around, mm -hmm. tearing it all apart, getting it cleaned up and welded, and the likeness that this will fail again is pretty good. It sucks, but it is what it is. 
All right, so that is the last one on here. This is so thin and it's so cracked up. I took a, a carbide tool and went in the groove and the cracks and followed them and then went over top of them. Uh, I started in the middle and just started doing lines, tapering down, uh, hopefully gonna spread that load out across my weld. I don't know if it'll help or not. This has got soot on it, I haven't cleaned it off yet, but we got all the way around here. Man, it's still hot, but I don't know. We don't have a lot to work with to begin with, so um, hopefully it works. I mean, the only thing I have to be concerned with, I may have to flap disc where the U-bolts go if, if I'm too high, but I don't think I will be. I think we'll be okay. All right, since we're waiting on parts, we're trying to do as much as we can to continue to make progress. Uh, I've got the front two hangers in with the leaf springs. I've cut out all the center bolts here because they're all pretty rough condition. So we're gonna replace all four of those. That'll make it easier for us to adjust because that center bolt will help us adjust where that airbag sits so we can get it right underneath the, the frame just right since we added some width here. Um, so we got, we're waiting on all those center bolts. I ordered two more sets of U-bolts, two more uh, sets of top plates for the U-bolts to go over the saddle. Got those coming and need one more bushing. We went ahead and took care of the bushings in this one. So it's got all new bushings in the way it's supposed to be. And we got our bump stop in here and on that side because on the rear axle, the panhard bar comes from that frame this way and on the front it comes from this side and goes that way so bump stops in on that side shock mounts are all in so as far as cross members go um ford uses ford and international use a doubled up cross member like this and bolted together at their suspension hangers now theirs are designed usually where they they bolt right through in the same bolt holes these aren't like that so you know we just did just what they did we just moved it right behind it and we just split the difference between this hole and this hole so that it would be equal distance if you look on this side you can see what i mean and um i wanted doubles there but i need the lift axle next this is the center of the lift axle so i need to know where the hanger belongs so i can get going one i have to make the hangers and two I need to know where I can put this because my my frame width is very consistent even though we've changed over our cross member style and, and manufacture up here um, from the front all the way to the back we're within a sixteenth of an inch right here uh, from factory to our add-on frame so it's coming along pretty good but I'm waiting on parts I've got my third bolt order in and this should be the last one um, We've gone through quite a few bolts, as you can imagine. And I can't put that hanger on that side because I ran out of that length that I need. So, but anyways, I need the lift axle next because we're waiting on parts. We've got the U-bolts, the saddles, the center bolts. And we've got, we're going to order, I haven't ordered them yet. We're going to pick up S-cams. You can see how worn this one is. It's supposed to look like this. It should be raised portion across here. And that raised portion it's worn down real bad there and there's a flat spot right here and right here on this one this one has a little bit of something somewhere i saw yeah right there it's got a flat spot there see where the roller sat a while so we're going to replace all four of those let's see if i can get the wear plates that go into we're going to do bushings and seals at the same time we have all new races coming and inner seals we're going to reuse the the bearings themselves i need gaskets for the ends of the drums for the axle itself and we're putting new brake shoes on because there's several places like this where it's ready to pop off where the lining's going to come off and you can see how crummy this is this stuff is not long for the world and not to mention nobody ever changes the rollers in these and they're stuck and both axles both sides 
So we're waiting on a lot of parts. I think that was it. A lot of work to do, a lot of work. Um, we may need to replace the bushing in this front hanger too. I think it may have some wear on it, but we're making good progress. Like I said, we'll just keep keep coming along. This is probably a good place to stop because it's getting really, really long, I'm sure. And uh, next part, hopefully, we'll be uh, finishing up the suspension and working on the lift axle. And I know this looks like it's way out of proportion, but when you figure the center of the rear drive is right here and the center of this drive is here, you know, I've got them evenly spaced. It, it just looks really far off, but that's okay. Anyways, thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.